Uh, welcome to our 2022 Wildwood 32 BHDS. Start right in your back bumper here. If you just kind of reach in, pull that cap out of there, you'll find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears in the adapter here. It's how they're hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself is fully extended is about 20 feet long. Just keep it stored in the bumper back here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit. Keep things a bit fresher. Cap just presses in place. In this corner, as well as each corner of the trailer, you're going to find a stabilizer jack. All they do is they run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up, and that'll get rid of any sort of bouncer sway that you see you got in the unit right now, just to keep things firm while you're out camping. Kind of additional to that, you've got these JT strong arms. They basically prevent any sort of forward and back movement. So you've got these two telescoping tubes with the little T-handle there to kind of lock them in place. So whenever you're moving your stabilizers, you want that loosened off. Once you've got them set, tighten it down in place, and that'll just kind of stiffen them up. Couple more steps forward and get your sewer system here. You're just gonna kind of press on that cap there, pull it out of there. You can see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer hose had. It'll attach the same way, just pressing it in until it kind of clicks. On the left, you get a black valve. On the right, you get a gray. Gray valve's controlling your gray tank. Gray tank is gonna be filled to your sinks as well, your bathroom sink and your shower. The one in the back there is gonna be referred to as your galley tank. That is gonna be filled just from your kitchen. The black tank is going to be filled with your toilets. It's of course going to be your dirtiest water, so we'll dump that first, and then we'll do the two grays afterwards just to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Up from there is your exterior shower. You'll get a key just like this guy here. Just stick it on into there and open her up. You get a standard three foot hose, hot and cold water, so if the dog's out getting muddy, you can spray him off before he goes inside. Once you're done, you're just kind of wrapping the hose around the handles there. Tuck that handle in and close it back down. Right beside that's a cable and satellite inlet. Pop it open, coax cable, plug into the respective ports, fire up at your TV locations. Down under beside that, you've got your city water connection. Water hose to plug into there, turn on the water, and that pressurizes the lines throughout the unit. Beside that again, we've got your black tank flush. So you may notice over time, after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically just some debris inside of the tank, hang them between the probes. So what you'll do is your water hose will just plug into there. Open up your black valve, turn on the water, and that'll just flush out that tank for you. Then you've got your power cord inlet. So as you pop that open, you'll find a little notch in the bottom corner. It's gonna land up with that notch there. Press those in together, little eighth turn will lock it down. Then you get the threaded collar in the back to properly lock it down. Pulling the cord back, you find a standard 30 amp end. Most campsites have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you the 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. Making our way towards the front here. We'll find that other front stabilizer jack. The only difference here is that your strong arm goes kind of towards the front and center of the unit. Storage compartment here flips on open, magnetic latches hold it. Inside of here you'll find your water hose. Inside of the water hose you'll find your park adapter. 30 amp cord to there, 15 to a standard outlet. To the front of the unit you get this black box back here so your battery is housed inside of there. You do have solar hooked up to it already so as long as you're out in the sun that guy should be charging for you. You also have that battery disconnect switch so with that in with that turned on your, your uh, short cord in the back will then charge your batteries also your seven pin will charge those batteries there's two knobs there for loosening them off push them back good access to your propane tanks in the video i'll show you the changeover in the back so it's currently green with the arrow pointing over here so it's letting us know we've got propane running off of this tank if it were to go red, it's just letting you know it's no longer got any propane there. At that point, I'll just flip the arrow over to this side, run off of this tank while you get the other one filled. In front's the power tongue jack. So right on top, you get your light switch there. Then on the bottom, up is up, down is down. Other side of the unit here, get the other end of your storage compartment. So you do have a dry erase surface there. So if you're looking to make notes, you can have them right there. Up on the front wall, you can find all your manual overrides. So this one, the silver one there is for your tongue jack up front. The one up top is for your strong arms. And this little guy right there is for running all of your stabilizers. Also on this wall right here, if you just press that, they do have a little light there. Okay. Little laundry hamper there, give you a better view of that from inside your front bedroom. Hot water tank here, you get that keyway, you just line that up and you can pop it on open. Control for turning it on with electricity is down in the bottom corner there. You get that little switch to fire it up. Turning it on with propane is just a switch inside of the unit. Before turning it on with either source though, you want to hit that relief valve right there. You should get some water out. If you're not getting any water out of there, there is a chance that it's empty and you do run the risk of burning out your elements if it's empty. So you just want to make sure it's full before firing it up. Once you're done, just lock it back down with the keyway. Exterior speakers here, they do have little blue lights inside of them that will turn on with your awning light. Up from there, you'll find your stove vent. So of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it. So you wanna make sure this flap here is opened up to help evacuate any sort of fumes. And then you get the two little clips there. You just press it into place, it clicks and prevents any dust from kicking up in there during travel. 
Down from there, you'll find the exhaust to your furnace. If you're ever running your furnace, you just wanna make sure it's not blocked off, it does get hot. Fresh water inlet here, pop that cap out of there, water hose to plug in, turn on the water, and that fills up the fresh water tank. Draining that tank right underneath, you get this white valve right there, you open that up and drain out the tank. T5 protected outlet here, resets just inside of the back of the bathroom. Then in the back here, you get your rear kitchen. So all our little latches here, we'll just undo those. And then gas struts hold it open for you. On the right side, you get a little light. All the storage across the top there. You do have a TV backer here as well. So look at amounts of TV, power outlet, and cable and satellite outlet. Hot and cold water, of course. And then your fridge here is 120 volt only. So as long as you're plugged in, this guy's going for you. Underneath. Right towards the front here, you got these two low point drains. Basically just allows your water system to drain itself out. So if you're leaving the unit for a while, you don't want your water going stale or staggering, open those up, drain out all that water. And lastly, we have the barbecue port. So that's right in the back here. We have this little pin on the side, we're just gonna pull that out. And we can flip this barbecue back around. In the back's a couple little straps, we'll just undo those. And then we can take the cover off of it. So once you have it swung around and you have it in the kind of the position that you like it, you're going to take your pin here, slide it down through there, just get it lined up into one of them holes, and that way it's not going to move on you. Two links in the front, undo those, and open it up, and here you'll find the hose. So that quick connect collar, you just pull that back and you can undo it. Underneath the handle, we'll attach our hose. And then down back at the unit here, you get that dust cap, we'll pull that out of the way. Then we can push that quick neck back, attach our hose. Once that hose is attached to this valve here, we're gonna open that up. With that valve open, you cannot undo that quick neck, so it's just kind of an added safety. Now that we've got it all hooked up, we're gonna push this knob in, turn it over to max, press the igniter just kind of rapidly. And once it clears all the air to the propane line, that guy should fire up for us. There we go. Once you get it going, you can of course just select the temperature. Once you're done, turning it up to off. Closing off that valve, undo our hose, put that dust cap back in there, undo the hose from the barbecue, and then I just like to attach the hose to itself just to ensure that nothing's getting inside of there. And then we can just close it back off. So for the cover, you want to take kind of this side here, so your female side of your links, just bring that over the top. Then this little flap here is going to come up underneath the bottom there and attach to the Velcros. And then we're going to take these straps, loosen them off, and they come right underneath the bar. And once you got them all in, we can tighten them down. Pull that pin back on out of here. Swing it around. And just lock it back into place. Just making sure that that flap there is opened up. You've also got your spare tire and straight up from there you'll find a pre-wired mount for a rear view or observation camera as well as the Lippard on the go ladder receiver. Okay, so now we'll make our way inside of the units. Your assist handle here just up 90 degrees and fall into place then we can open up the door. Your steps, you're gonna pull that blue handle in towards the center and pull them on back. These little tabs there, if you push them in, you can extend or retract your legs based on your campsite needs. Now, as we come inside the unit, first things first, right on the left there, you get your fire extinguisher, that's standard, pull the pen point and shoot. Beside it is your GFI protected outlet. It's test on the bottom, reset on top. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Up the wall from there, this dimmer switch, if you just touch that, it turns on all your lights. Press and hold, and they'll dim down. Continue holding, they'll dim back up. Release at any point just to choose that level of lighting. 
The light switch in the top right here is going to do all of your accent lights above your slide. Switch on the left there does your awning light outside. Awning itself is on this switch here. Press and hold out and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning is fully extended, we're going to see a little white flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're going to stop. If you were to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case the fabric would be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So there's our flap, and there's the tube, so we'll stop right there. Now if it were to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water anyways. So what you can do is grab either arm, front or rear, just pull straight down on it. And you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out of the head, allowing water to then run off. So if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring them back in though, you just want to make sure these guys are back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending out. Then you're going to press and hold in, the awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just going to watch to make sure that your fabric's over top of the tube. Last thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does catch a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. Your main slide out's just right here. Press and hold out and that slide will make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, we're going to hear some clicks from the motors letting us know they've reached their stall. Once we hear those, we'll let go of the switch. So two red switches there, the one on the right is your water heater. So as you turn that switch on, you get that little red light there letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence is started, that light's gonna go out. It's gonna try that three times. If after the third try it hasn't fired up, this light will come on and stay on. At that point, just off, back on to reset it. Switch on the left there is your water pump. So as you turn that on, it turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. On the top, you have your monitor system. So batteries on the left there, you can see we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, will go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black, your gray, and your galley. So into the front bedroom here now. In through the door, and your light switch is right on the left there. TV back or right front and center, power outlet for it, as well as your cable and satellite outlet for it. If you pick up the foot of your bed, you do get access to that front storage compartment. And this compartment here, as we pop that open, that's your laundry hamper that you saw from that outside compartment. USB charging. Closet space here does have CPAP access, so there's a power outlet there as well. And then just storage across the top. In the head of the bed is a little light just on its own center push button. Then just identical storage on the far side here with the same sort of CPAP access. Lines throughout the unit, pull down, sit where you leave them, bring them back up, just give them that snap and they go. Emergency exit here, you pull this red tab to get rid of the screen, take this handle here, throw it outside, hop on out. And then around the wall from there, we get the other end of your entertainment unit. So TV backer right there, run all your cables down through here, down to your antenna outlet, which is in the center. Turning the antenna on, just that little button there will also help clear up your stereo signal. Cable and satellite outlet up top. We are prepped for Wi-Fi as well. Storage on either side. Sound bar, stereo, pretty straightforward. Power button there turns it on. Select to get through all your uh, settings. Mode through all of your inlets and all your volume controls there. Zone one is the sound bar itself. Zone two is your outside set of speakers. Fireplace, power button on the right. Center right, you have that flame color. In the center, you have the bottom illumination. Center left, you have low, high, and off. Far left, you have a timer of 30 minutes up to nine hours. In the slide out, your lights are just on their own center push buttons. This is what Wild, Wildwood refers to as their Versa Lounge. So you can see we've got the poster here kind of showing the different layouts that you can have for it. Kind of your main piece to this is the fact that the tabletop, of course, goes down into your bed. So you'd be taking your tabletop, wiggling it up and out of your legs. The legs will then wiggle out of their bases. The table can sit onto three these three wooden ledges there. It'll take the back cushion there as well as those two fill in the center to create a bed. Then you can also take this piece here. So as we pull this up, you're going to see two little metal legs on it, right? They sit inside of little pockets. You've got a metal pocket right there, another one kind of in the back. 
as well as on this side here. So you can kind of just choose whether you have it, you know, in this side here, in which case you've got your dinette, or you can have it on this side here and kind of have the big extra couch. This filler piece here would be if you are using it for the couch. So you take this filler piece, kind of go up on the wall, that piece there kind of extends the couch out, right? So I'll just pop this into this side again real quick. I'll let you see that. Also, this couch here does fold down. You can take that up, flips on down. You do also have storage underneath it. So as you open that up, you get the three bins there. Same sort of storage underneath your dinettes with these same bins there. This compartment here, or storage here, as you open that up, you'll find that binder. That binder's got all of your owner's manuals in it, any remotes, any keys, you'll find right in there. Right underneath it is a little light. Hot and cold water at the sink, of course, and you do also get the folding sink cover. Underneath the sink is some storage, just being mindful of your drains and your water lines. If you're looking to winterize the unit yourself once it comes time, right behind this panel here is your hot water tank, so you're looking for those bypasses that are just right there. In this compartment here, you get what they call as the active Susie, so you have all your drawers that you can nicely hide away. Microwave at the top, pretty standard, just like home. Range vent underneath it, you get the light and the fan. This is that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up. The bifold cover just flips on back. You can take your knobs over to high, hit it with the sparker, fires right up. Once you're done, just turning them all off, letting it cool down, and then closing it off. For the oven, you're gonna turn that knob there over to that little flame, hit the sparker, and just as it clears the air over the lines, you can see that pilot light gets going. Once you have it going, you just hold the knob in for another few seconds, then you can release the knob and the flame will hold itself. Turn up to your desired temperature, and off she goes. Once you're done, you can turn it back down just to pilot. It'll hold just the pilot light for you, but if you're going traveling, you just want to make sure that's right off. Light switch there. 12 volt fridge, so as long as your batteries are charged or charging, this guy's going for you. Water pump is just right down behind here. One screw in each corner, pop that panel out of the way. Pantry space, thermostat here as well. So you're gonna start from fan low. That's just moving some air around with the low fan. High fan moving some air around. Cool high is gonna be the high fan with compressor in and out as needed to give you your cooling. Temp selection is just your arrows here. Cool low, same idea, just now we're using the low fan. Cool low auto is where it becomes an on-demand system. So both the compressor and the fan will cut in and out as needed. Same idea in cool high, just now we're using the high fan. With your air conditioner going, you've got two different options. You can have these two louvers here closed, in which case we'll be using all of our ceiling ducting to move the air, or you can open them up and it just dumps all of its air in the living area. Here. So when you first get out to your campsite, you want those open, cool off this area as quickly as possible, and you can close them off, start moving the air throughout. After cool high auto, if you hit that bar again, it'll come down into heat, it'll turn off the air conditioner, turn on your furnace. The furnace is moving its air through all your floor registers. After heat, you hit that bar again, comes down into off, and then just kind of cycles back around. Straight down from there, you'll find your LP detector. Propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off just like a smoke detector would. Smoke detector is just right here. There we go. In the hallway here, there's just this one little light on its own center push button. Then into the bathroom. The light switches right up on the wall there. Toilet there, flushes right in the right side. Hot and cold water at your sink, of course. Medicine cabinet right up above that. So as you open that up, you can see this little tongue right there. It sits into this elastic as your travel strap. And then in the shower, you get your hot and cold water, standard head and hose. Right above my head's your roof vent. You're just turning that knob to open it up. Back corner, you get a switch to turn on the fan. And then of course, just the entry door here, which is your rear entry door from outside. Closet space here. As well as a little drawer space. Converter, press the top and center, it'll pop on open. You get all of your breakers in the middle here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center, so just turn it off and then back on to reset it. All of your fuses on the right side. Whenever a fuse pops, you get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. And now for your back room, you just gotta make sure that this slide out's opened up first. So we'll press and hold out and that slide will make its way out. Do make sure that when you're running this slide that this door is closed. If you've got it open slightly, it can catch the slide. So same thing, once this slides out all the way, we'll hear some clicks. So 
just like that. All right, now we can come in. Your light switch is right inside the entry door. Your little ladder here, you can pick that up, swing it on out, and you get access to that top bunk. Same emergency exit that you had in the front bedroom. TV backer in here, and I do believe we have cable and satellite outlets. Yep, right in the top there. Some storage space down below, as well as the side. Then your bunk space here, as you can see, you've currently got that couch there. It is all just kind of loose cushions, so you can take these back cushions, throw them off to the side. This also flips out and kind of creates a big, like a queen size mattress. A little light up there just in its own center push button. Travel latches on the right side here. Have that in towards the center, you can swing it on down. There's your bunk space. I do recommend that you have it down for travel. Okay. And that's really about it for this unit. So if you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.